What is the thinking behind this plan cooked up by the Lib Dems and the SNP? Well, first of all, this is an offer to the country by our leader, Joe Swinson, who's <clears throat> trying to provide some leadership here through the gridlock that we have. Clearly, this do-or-die pledge of the Prime Minister to leave the European Union by the end of October is dead. But the question is, what do we do next? And we've got to break the gridlock. And as a party, the Liberal Democrats have always been clear that we want to stop Brexit. Now, the only way we can stop Brexit in this Parliament is through a people's vote, referring this issue back to the people. But it's quite clear now that it's highly unlikely that in this current Parliament we're going to be able to achieve that. We've put down 17 amendments in this Parliament to provide for a people's vote. Um, we've voted for it seven times, which is the number of times it's been put before Parliament. We've never hit the numbers. And now that you've got 19 Labour MPs who have voted for the Prime Minister's hard Brexit, who will not support a people's vote... Well, and you've probably disagree with the depiction of it as a hard Brexit, and many of those Labour MPs well, would as well. I, I would say... A deal I, on the table. But, but the point is, they're not going to support a people's vote. And then half of the former independent or the former Conservative MPs like Philip Hammond also will not support a people's vote. And therefore, in this Parliament, it simply does not look like we are going to be able to achieve that. And indeed, it looks more likely that you would be able to do that in a new Parliament. Now, a really important thing about our bill, by the way, there are three things to bear in mind about this. First of all, it takes no deal off the table. So this only kicks in, a general election on the 9th of December only kicks in if an extension to the 31st of January has been granted. Secondly, at the moment, under the Fitzstone Parliament Act, the Prime Minister, if there is an early election, he gets to choose the date of the general election. This bill that we've put forward actually fixes the date of the general election for the 9th. And the, the last thing is, of course, there will not be requisite time to be able to get his withdrawal agreement bill through. There's no, no way that this can be rammed through. So you've got, three, you've got three really important things there. Takes no deal off the table fixes legally the date of an election and ensures that we don't see the Prime Minister trying to ram his withdrawal agreement through the House of Commons. And it then refers this issue back to the people so we can end the gridlock in Westminster. Because we've got a responsibility okay. so to provide listening... not just a legislature that functions, but a government that functions. And you can only really do that, it seems to us, through a general election. Now, listening to what you say, it feels as if the real aim of this move to support an election is A, to try and stop Brexit happening altogether, potentially, and secondly, to try and make sure that the Prime Minister's Brexit deal has no chance of getting through. So why on earth would the government support it? Well, the government claims it wants an election. Uh, that is the stipulated, stipulated aim of the Prime Minister. And actually, but they want to get a deal through, and then if the deal doesn't go through, then they want an election. That's a crucial but, difference, but, but isn't they, it? But they're not going to be able to get the deal through well, in, that, the in, in that kind of time frame. But you and I know, and you're a seasoned observer of all of this, that there are many stages of a bill, and there are many amendments that um, could be tabled to this. One thing, by the way, I want to be absolutely clear about this bill. Uh, the principle that we have used in putting it together is to mess as little as possible with the Fixed, terms par fixed Term Parliament Act. And that means that it is being drafted very tightly. So there has been this issue raised about, well, would you seek to change the franchise through this bill, uh, through its passage? Say, for example, to add 16 and 17-year-olds to the register or EU citizens. Now, we've got no objection to that, those two things in principle, but it would be out the, outside the scope of this bill, and we don't have the luxury of time to give requisite scrutiny to those things. Now, the only way that this can achieve the ambitions that you want is if a general election effectively produces a Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister. Well, I can disagree more about that. Uh, what, you think that would be a Lib Dem majority government? Well, what I am saying is, is ultimately we have to pass this back to the people. So what Neither... is the outcome that you think... Well, the outcome, work? look, we want, of course, we'll be fighting for a majority Liberal Democrat government, and if that is delivered, we will immediately stop this chaos and revoke yeah. Article but 50. But what if it doesn't happen? However, however, if we don't have the numbers in a new House of Commons to revoke Article 50, of course we'll still be campaigning for a people's vote. And this is the point, is we don't really know... But that know... would mean Jeremy Corbyn in number 10. But this is the thing. This, it would, wouldn't you're, it? You're talking 20th century politics, Sophie. We're in the 21st century, and if you listen to people like John Curtis, for example, widely acknowledged to be the biggest polling guru in our country, he is saying we are in full party politics now. And no one knows what will happen at that general election. You and I both know that the 
by, by far the most likely scenario is either Boris Johnson in number 10, who will not grant a second referendum, or Jeremy Corbyn, who might. So your plan defends, depends on Jeremy Corbyn getting the keys to number 10. No, it doesn't. Our plan depends on us delivering as many Liberal Democrat MPs as we can at the next Parliament. How many do you think would be a realistic uh, a proposition? Then? Well, I think ultimately the public get to decide this. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> you're trying to get me to say either I want Boris Johnson or Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister. And I think, frankly, the country's fed up with that choice. They have a new person on the block, next generation politician, a breath of fresh air compared to the baggage that the two other individuals I've just mentioned are carrying, which is Joe Swinson. And ultimately, the public will get to determine this. And, you know, if I start throwing figures around, you're going to say, oh, well, the Liberal Democrat Democrats think they're going to get this or that. Ultimately, the whole point of referring this back to the people in a general election is that they are royally fed up with the impasse and the mess. And we've got to front up with people and say, look, we've got a legislature and we've got a government that is not doing its constitutional function. And now we could all sit back and say it would be very comfortable for us to carry on taking our salaries and carrying on with this chaos. But Joe Swinson's judgment is that is not in the national interest. And that is why she has put forward this bill today. Now, um, you've obviously got the support of the SNP uh, yes. to support this as well. Uh, Labour, of course, have been silent on this so far. Is that because you talked to them about it and they rejected it? Or did you just not approach them about it at all? No, so everybody, um, over the course of, I mean, obviously, this is a fast moving thing. So over the course of the last 12 hours or so, different people have been spoken to. I mean, look, you're right, Sophie, I agree with you. This is not going to happen unless one of the two main parties, at least one of them, So what were backs the conversations this, with Labour? Whether they back this. And they both say that they want a general election. And we have given the vehicle through which you can have that general election. So I think the problem that the Labour Party's got is that it is... To, to some, you know, to some extent, a bit divided on this issue as to whether or not to have a general election or not, and let us wait and see what the government says. I mean, I, I did think that um, uh, uh, Nikki Morgan's interview with you earlier was something, you know, qu quite something, given that in her former guise as a Treasury Select Committee chair, she would have been arguing for a very different course of action. And it was interesting because I don't think, while she you know, you'd expect the government to go, this is a gimmick, it's, done. it's not, read the bill, Nikki. Uh, she did not rule out the government necessarily playing, not playing ball with this bill. The, the, the thing that she has she to realise, well, she has stunt, to realise this, because she, 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 she is somebody who's been very critical of our own pri her own Prime Minister, and I think has said in the past, on the record, that this is somebody who, to put it generously, is economical with the truth. And the problem that most members of parliament have with his proposals, there are many, but saying, well, let's have this general election on December the 12th, is that there is no guarantee in law that he will actually follow through on that promise. Once parliament has passed a dissolution motion, it empowers the prime minister under the terms of the Fixed Term Parliament Act to have the general, general election at a date of their choosing, because to use the language, it is done by proclamation by the queen on the advice of the Prime Minister. And we know that this Prime Minister is not shy about misleading the Queen and putting her in a compromising position. And you saw that over the prorogation, the unlawful prorogation of Parliament.